हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज प्रिया व्रत अगेन आई वेरी हैप्पी एंड वार्म वेलकम टू इंप्रूव आई क्यू टुडे द टॉपिक दैट आई गोना डिस्कस इज स्ट्राटिग्राफी इफ यू डोंट नो देन लेट मी टेल यू दैट दिस टॉपिक इज वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर जाम एस्पिरेंट्स सो टेकिंग नो टाइम लेट गेट स्टार्टेड इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू दैट व्हाट इज स्ट्राटिग्राफी वाई स्ट्राटिग्राफी इज इम्पोर्टेंट इट्स टाइप्स एंड द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट दैट इज द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ स्ट्राटिग्राफी so what is the definition of stratigraphy so stratigraphy is a branch of geology concerned with a detailed study of the rock strata in a systematic way in accordance to the lithology chronology and sequence of that rock this was the definition but uh, i have gathered some basic points about stratigraphy those are in this single picture so the word stratigraphy mainly comprises of two words that is strata and graphy so the word strata actually refers to layers or we can call it lamina and this lamina make the complete lamination for the bedding plane of rock hence we can also define stratigraphy as the systematic study of strata or layer or lamina of rocks okay then come to second point saying it is uh, archaeologically very much important uh, i think you must have heard of archaeologist their work is to investigate on buried object so stratigraphy becomes very much important for this kind of works again it is also known as historical geology and this is so as we study about the complete history of rocks okay then the third point says it provides various data like origin composition distribution and succession of strata actually we can also determine the relative age of strata which is described in the next point that is in short it is also called the time frozen in rocks means rock will provide us the complete data to determine their time of existence Mm, and uh, it also provides idea about occurrence of strata destruction of lamina and fossil present in them so from this sentence we came to know that study of stratigraphy provides complete description of rock even we can find the order and relative position of strata according to different geological time so this was all about what is stratigraphy then you need to know why study of stratigraphy is important so we can give a very simple answer for this as at its most simple level it allows geologist to determine the sequence of events in a sedimentary basin so stratigraphy is important therefore we covered why is stratigraphy important nextly we are going to know um, what are the types of stratigraphy in geology stratigraphy has been divided into these types that is the lithostratigraphy biostratigraphy chronostratigraphy pedostratigraphy geochronostratigraphy magnetostratigraphy chemo stratigraphy and lastly the sequence stratigraphy so let's come to know about the lithostratigraphy actually it is the organization of strata on the basis of their lithologic characters here so the lithologic characters in the sense those characters which can be collected physically and in this type of stratigraphy subdivision of rock succession occurs into units on the basis of rock type only it basically focuses on examining the physical differences of the rocks and fossils have no significance in lithostratigraphy you can see this picture for an example actually geologists just conclude lithostratigraphy by only the physical characters of rock okay then let's know what is the chronostratigraphy it is an integrated approach to establish the time relationship among the geological unit here geological unit are formed to interpret all this in numeric value no need to worry we will discuss it later so this type of stratigraphy studies the age of strata we can see the units of chronostratigraphy from this picture this is the largest unit and this one is the smallest you can pause the video or take a short to write and this was all about the chronostratigraphy the next one is the biostratigraphy it is the study of fossil record of the rocks on faunal succession to establish the relationship it also says the use of dating of rock by investigating the fossil contents okay have you noticed that i am emphasizing on fossil word here i think you know that we can determine the age of fossil by radioactive dating method similarly arranging those fossils in a succession can give us the data about the rock which we can call as the biostratigraphy this was all about the biostratigraphy if you want some succession of fossils then you can take a snap of this Uh, then the next type of stratigraphy is the magnetostratigraphy 
here i am providing you with the definition only you will study this in brief in future aspects for now this is sufficient enough so magnetostratigraphy tells about the magnetic properties of rock units for the purpose of correlation here actually the magnetic properties of corresponding rock leads in stratigraphic study uh then come to know what is the pedo stratigraphy here correlation of rock done through buried and relict soil uh, so here the buried objects found in corresponding rock types leads in stratigraphic study the next type is the geochrono stratigraphy this type of stratigraphy has many of similarities with chrono stratigraphy as both are related to the relative age of rock but its units are different from chrono stratigraphy it actually depicts in depositional sequence and packages of strata and which shows the correlation to determine the age of that rock this was all about the geochrono stratigraphy uh, then the next one is the uh, chemo stratigraphy here correlation is done by looking the chemical changes done with the rocks for chemo stratigraphic study the chemical changes are actually considered then the last one is the sequence stratigraphy the sequence stratigraphy is a branch of geology that attempts to subdivide and link sedimentary deposits into unconformity bound units on a variety scale and explain these stratigraphic units in terms of variation in sediment supply and variation in the rate of change in accommodation space uh, so this was all about sequence stratigraphy uh, and these were the elaboration of all the types of stratigraphy okay but uh, during the elaboration i have used the term stratigraphic unit so let's know what are the stratigraphic unit uh, for example let consider the lithostratigraphic category the unit are supergroup group formation member and bed here the supergroup is the largest unit and uh, bed is the smallest unit you can take a screenshot of this page for stratigraphic unit okay and uh, this was also so these were the stratigraphic units now i will discuss the principle of stratigraphy but you should know why this was required to propound these principles actually the principle of stratigraphy are like the geological tools that really helps to determine the relative age number of existing events and field relations which can be estimated from one outcrop or from many outcrop okay so here these are uh, the principle of stratigraphy has three major principles like principle of lithology principle of superposition and the principle of fossil content and also other principles are there uh, like original horizontality cross cutting relations principle of lateral continuity faunal succession inclusion uniformitarianism uh, and the last one that is the chilled margins uh then the first principle of stratigraphy is the principle of lithology this principle involves in identifying the rocks according to their lithology so lithology means uh, the study of the lithostratigraphic units it actually signifies that older beds are found below the newer ones and for identification we can only take the sedimentary rocks and volcanic rocks so this was all about the principle of lithology just come to second that is the principle of superposition uh, this reputed principle was given by nicola steno in the year 1667 and uh, this principle can be admired as an order when beds are not disturbed it actually saying that we can take all the beds in an order when those are in undisturbed manner the main fact is a bed that is over another bed is always younger it also states that the sedimentary rocks become younger from bottom to the top and uh, this is because the accumulation of the sediments only occur on the top of the surface uh, hence this was the principle of superposition the next one is the fossil content it actually says that the lower form of life are preserved in uh, older beds while the evolved and distinct form are found in the newer ones from this we came to know that each sedimentary bed contains a particular set of fossil by which it can be identified you can even see the succession of fossils here and from this actually the geologist determines who is younger and who is one is the older rock as fossils vary in every strata of rock so this principle came into existence we covered all the major principles 
so just come to other principles uh, that is the next one is the original horizontality it says uh, rock layers are deposited horizontally being parallel to the surface if they are not horizontal or making some inclination then they definitely uh, have undergone some tectonic activities here this picture is uh, because of the ho original horizontality uh, but due to following uh, tectonic activities like uh, folding or faulting such type of structures have been formed in original horizontality both folding and faulting type of tectonic activities take part the same thing about original horizontality uh, this one is the original uh, horizontal condition and this one is the inclined condition now i think you all can understand what is the principle of original horizontality the next principle that i will discuss is the principle of cross cutting relationship it is saying if one geologic feature cuts another rock then the feature that has been cut is the older in other words all the uh, time younger feature cuts the older feature as you can see in picture the largest rock strata is being cut by this middle strata and again this middle strata is cut by the smallest strata uh, then according to the cross cutting relationship principle uh, this one will be the oldest and this one will be the youngest and it will be of intermediate age with the better graphics and distinction you can see the same thing here okay now i think you are completely cleared about this so let come to next this is the principle of lateral continuity it states that if layers are deposited horizontally over the sea floor then they would be expected to be laterally continuous over some distance and sedimentary rocks are laterally continuous over large areas okay this picture can make you better understand about this principle uh, but this picture i think damn good to understand this picture actually in all the cases the undeformed layers are showing continuity to a certain distance uh so this was all about the principle of lateral continuity then let come to know what is the principle of faunal succession the law of faunal succession states that the fossil occur in definite invariable sequence in the geologic record and fossil represent living creatures that have been evolved through time so when we found a fossil of the same type in two different areas that are not laterally continuous then we are sure that the rocks are about the same age so it actually depicts about the inheritance of a fossil or a certain creature if you find two rocks containing creature having similar type uh, at such or in this picture uh, then you must pretty sure that the rocks are about the same age this was all about the faunal succession okay then let's know what is the principle of inclusion the law of inclusion states that if a rock body contains fragments of another rock body it must be younger than the rock containing these fragments it is often useful for distinguishing between a lava flow and a seal uh, you can see this in picture if the enclosing rock is an igneous rock then the inclusion are called xenoliths in this picture the surrounding rock is younger while the included rock is the older you can see this with better graphics so always the rock which is included is older while the surrounding one is the younger so this was all about the principle of inclusion then the next principle is the uniformitarianism <laughs> the name is long itself but comes with a little understanding okay this principle was postulated by james hutton in between the year 1726 to 1797 features like uh, mud cracks ripple marks graded bedding have the same features that could be seen forming in modern environments and the past geologic events can be explained by the phenomena and events observable today this picture is the mud cracks of uh, previous but uh, this reveals the present rock type so it is studied as the present is the key to the past so now we covered principle of uniformitarianism I will just come to next and the last there is the principle of chilled margins 
when a hot magma intrudes into cold rock then the magma along the margins of the intrusion will cool more rapidly than the interior so fine grained or glassy rock will be along the margin whereas coarser grained will be further away from the margin so chill margins are younger than the surrounding rock because surrounding rock had to have been there first in order to cause the cooling effect uh you can see this in picture so this is the fine grain region uh, which is due to the effect of rapid cooling and this is the coarser grain region which took some time to be cooled um hence uh, it clearly shows that this one is the older rock site and uh, what is getting intruded is the younger one hence we came to know all the principle one by one so this is the end of my video next topics will be covered in upcoming lectures to get informed do like share comment and subscribe as well as press the bell icon thank you